What is the hybrid church and what is the future of it? Let's talk about it right now. Well, hey guys, welcome to the front row where we help you to impact your front row. I'm joined today. I got Jim, Gina, and Jalee with us. So thanks for being here, guys. And today we are talking about the idea of hybrid church and the idea that is specifically you have physical expression and digital. As you know, 2020, we were basically forced into just digital. But now looking at that as rather than just something you kind of have on the side, it's now a primary part of what we do as a church. So, Jim, I want to start with you. Can you kind of just help define this idea of hybrid church and what that means for us? Yeah, I think, um, you know, technology has always helped the church to have a place to visit before you visit. Mm -hmm. And so it's always served as kind of like that first front door for people. But now because of COVID, the shutdowns and all that, people have moved where that's the entirety of their church engagement. Right. And some, the hybrid idea is that we will use technology but still have some physical contact. I can be part of a community, whether I'm physically there or digitally there. And so it's kind of a hybrid, not a full electric car, right. but a part gas, part electric car. Yeah. So it's a both and. Yeah. So I think the discussion people have concern is, well, can I be a digital only person? Am mm -hmm. I, am I still a part of the church if all I do is digital right. or do, and, and is there any problem with being hybrid with being both? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's probably because it's been something for so long that like, Hey, if you have online gatherings, that's nice if you have it, mm -hmm. but it's not necessary. And then when you are forced into it, it's like, okay, now we actually have to figure this thing out, right? And made that super challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but for all you guys, you know, like going through, obviously we all work at this church, but um, as unbiasedly as possible, what do you feel like are pros and cons to this hybrid model or digital and all those kinds of things? One of the things that I loved about the hybrid model was when I was traveling, I could still feel like I was still engaged and could worship and mm. like participate with my church family still feel like I was part right. of the gathering even though I was not physically present and the mm. great thing about digital also is that in the chat I can still feel like I'm talking to somebody I know Gina hosts a lot of times yeah. online uh, that I could still participate in that way so I yeah. feel like you know I could still be a part yeah, yeah absolutely yeah it's amazing how quickly we've become used to it I remember right before COVID happened was the first time I did church online mm. here and we were traveling and I just remember being like, man, it feels like I'm I'm at home with my church family. I just something about I can still see everybody. I could still chat with people in the chat and, you know, and then of course COVID happened and we mm. had to adapt really quick, really, really quickly. It mm. felt like overnight. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I think it's just the most amazing tool. I loved it, you know, when we were all home I could chat with you guys, and even though maybe I wasn't seeing you, I could still talk with you. And, right. you know, I just felt like it was super seamless, um, and I still, you know, love using it. And yeah. I just think it's great. You can connect with people all across the country. We yeah. have people, you know, all over the world every week. It's just, it's amazing. Right. I, I love it. I yeah. love it. It's pretty awesome for that. And like you said, Julie, when you're, when you have to be gone, you still feel connected. Mm. Um I, what's interesting is I'm starting to see people come back to church that I haven't seen physically for a year. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And even though they've stayed connected to the church that way, mm -hmm. yeah. when they walk in, they go, man, this feels so good. Mm. Because even though I've been part of the church this way, this I've missed. And so what struck me is I've kept up with you over the year by being involved digitally, but you haven't kept up with me. Mm. That's what that felt like to me is yeah. people going, my pastor, for example, hasn't known me, seen me for yeah. over a year. Yeah. So th it was like that that reconnection, even though we've been connected. Yeah. When you when you're part of that digital expression, you're keeping up with that. Yeah. But is that keeping up with you? Yeah. Right. And that's where that need for community comes in. And I think that's the the real question is how do I do both? And the chat's huge. You do a great job. We're trying to learn how to how to offer community and right. and discipleship opportunities for people who are who are forced or choose yeah. digital only engagement. Right. Um, but we need it to be more than just watching. Right. You know. Yeah, and that's what was uh, my next question. In that, I was curious. Do you feel that 
like in your personal opinion, if someone says I'm only digital, that's the only way I engage. It's the only way I talk to people through our church. Is that uh, more negative than positive or is it just, is there some gray area to that? I'm really torn on that because uh, I've literally been out of town, you know, and been watching online and uh, it was interesting because I was in a different time zone and I was just being able to sit and worship and literally just had a really incredible encounter with God. Yeah. And, you know, you would think, oh, well, that can't happen, you know, digitally. That can only happen if you're in the room. Right. Yeah. But uh, the Holy Spirit is not confined by you know, whether we're actually here at the church or whatnot. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm conflicted because, you know, for what you were talking about is, um, you know, the scripture that says, do not forsake the gathering together. Mm-hmm. Um, and though I'm present and it's it's great, right. uh, just like what you were saying, it's, it's hard to maintain relationships or mm-hmm. accountability or connectedness connectedness um so yeah it's hard to say it's good or bad um i think like so many things you get out of it what you put into it i was thinking i met this couple a while back and they had to be online only they were taking care of his mom um i think they said they were online only for like two years it was just a long time but they loved it they just felt like this was their home they'd never physically been here um they took care of his mom until she passed and then they came but they engaged with it they were faithful every week they were you know so i think it's like what jaleese said you know if you are you're there and you are putting into it you are because if you just have it you know on in the background and you're doing the dishes you're gonna get what you're putting into it it's it's a tool and you have to use it and it I think it can go either way. Yeah. I think people are on a journey and where am I at in my journey? So I was thinking of during COVID, some of my introvert friends said, I've been preparing for this my whole life. (laughs) And finally, I love the world. I get to stay home. I get to work from home. Everybody's digital. It it was a zone. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet also the introvert needs to come out of the zone. And so what's the journey I'm on? So for some, if digital, if digital church is a chance for me to consume without engaging, mm-hmm. that can have a downside. Yeah. So right. on the other hand, it can be powerful. I too have had incredible moments with God purely digitally in our uh, gatherings. Yeah. And it's amazing. So it's legit. It's totally yeah. legit. Yeah. Question is, where am I going and what is, what's next in my journey of faith? Right. So... Uh, can I be digital only and still go everywhere Jesus wants me to go mm-hmm. in my own formation, right. in being known yeah. and in knowing and serving and loving? Yeah. We're trying to learn all that because there are right. people who, who you know, uh, there was research done on are people going to come back because yeah. now they have these, they've realized this. And they said a lot of people won't come back for a couple of reasons. One is they realized I really am engaging digitally. I love this. Mm-hmm. Others stopped engaging And the sky didn't fall. Hmm. And they realized, Mm. I can live without the church, and my world didn't fall apart. Mm. So it feeds that consumer, what do I want to do then that's just fun for me? Mm -hmm. Remember years ago, I was talking to my brother who had given up on church for a while. And he's like, I don't really need church. I said, well, the the question might not be, what do you need? The question might be, what do they need from you? So now you're robbing you. You're robbing them of you. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't just come to consume. You come because by connecting together, I win when you're with me. Right. So I think it's a broader picture that, that each believer needs to navigate. Can I fully be a part of the body of Christ and flourish in my own journey and contribute to the journey of others purely digitally? I think that's going to be possible. But yeah. those are the things I would encourage people to think about. Yeah, and it might be different per person. And yeah. I think, you know, you mentioned it. Describing it, it is a tool. As much as like this building is a tool. You know, this building isn't the church and it needs to be here for this to happen. Um, As much as internet, it's all just tools to do what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it might be different for for some people. If online engaging, you want to be digital only so that you can just stick to yourself, get your entertainment basically, and just stick with that, then it might not be a healthy way to practice it because you need to be outside of yourself in some kind of community, you know, yeah. with people engaging with yeah, others. What I love about digital is it allows people who have been burned by the church, mm-hmm. are scared to walk into a church, 
uncomfortable with what's that culture like. They yeah. get to discover more yeah. from the safety of their home. Yeah. Recently, we had some people come to church who that's their story. Bad experiences as a kid. Mm. I don't want anything to do with the church. I'm a little freaked out. Yeah. I would think, hey, digital's perfect for you to give this a shot and find your way back in. They came in person, not digitally, mm. and they sat there overwhelmed. This was the feedback they gave me. Overwhelmed at seeing a room full of people positively experience something together mm. that they had thought was a toxic place. Yeah. And they're watching these people healthy, happy, loving one another, positivity in the gathering, and they were doing this positive thing mm. together, and they were overwhelmed by it. It's awesome. I think there's a powerful thing that that we need to make sure it doesn't disappear. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So then uh, kind of the last question I have just to wrap all this up is thinking oikocentrically for your oikos, mm -hmm. for those people in your front row, um, how do we stay connected to that? How do we use this tool? As your society becomes more and more digital yeah. and it becomes more of the preference of people, how do we use that to engage with our oikos? Yeah. Man, I love it. I love the the sharing on the Instagram and Facebook and it's just so much more accessible like you were saying. You know, there I have so many people in my life who would never, you know, they think they're going to catch on fire if they step in a church. You know, God's <laughs> just going to smite them. But, you know, it's even as simple as you can just share. We do, you know, those little 3-minute clips mm -hmm. from each message. Yeah. I love posting that because you never know who's going to need to hear that or who it may just play and they don't want it to, but God's going to speak to them anyway. Yeah. I just think it just blows the doors off of what we thought was possible and just totally opens up a new realm for the spirit to work in our oikos. Yeah. I'm just really excited about it. So I, yeah. Uh, cool. I meet with high school seniors during their senior year. And one of the things I did this year with that group is uh, we watched so it'd be like engaging hybridly. Mm -hmm. We watched not a church service, but a, a discussion between two people mm. about a very hot political, social, cultural moment topic. So we were able to watch that, then turn it off and then talk about it. Mm. And I think that's going to be a powerful way for your oikos too. is say, yeah. hey, um, let's have breakfast together. And I want to watch this. And then I want us just to talk about it. And you can watch part of it. You can watch all of it. You could, you could frame a, a part of it that you want to have a discussion mm -hmm. about. So it's a great tool to help your oikos find their way into faith community with, uh, again, this safer space because it's just us. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to dress up. You don't have to worry about what people are thinking about you. Yeah. And, uh, and it feels safe. Yeah. So I think it's an incredible tool for your oikos. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I know I got family you know, back home in Colorado who have started watching and attending Evergreen online uh, and just keep up. And yeah. I'm kind of shocked by who it does. Mm -hmm. You know, it was one of those, I was like talking to my mom or something. She told me, oh, you know, this person, and they watch every week and they just wow. love what you're doing over there. I'm like, since when do they watch anything yeah. that's church related? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think there is th this potential, right, for people to engage in something they wouldn't normally. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple in our church who uh, went on a boat uh, up in Seattle, they spent a week on a rented yacht with this couple. Oh, man. And on Sunday, they said, hey, to their friends, we're going to go to church online. <laughs> the and so their That's friends awesome. said, well, I'll go with you. So they sat so on this cool. yacht and watched church. <laughs> yeah. And that was a year and a half ago. And that couple has never missed a gathering online oh, from their it. boat. That's amazing. And they started participating financially in the church. Wow. And so it was this, it was just a handful of weeks ago that they showed up and they said, you're our pastor and we've never met you before. Uh. <laughs> and they wanted to see the building because they, you know, all they yeah. saw was the camera shots. Mm -hmm, right. And right. it was like, it was like they were coming to Disneyland. <laughs> They're so like, funny. we've been a part of this place, but never yeah. been here. This yeah. is so awesome. Yeah. So it's a totally cool story how your yeah. oikos can just be used to yeah. help people on that journey. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That's, That's so amazing. Yeah. That is awesome. I, uh, I think I would like to do church on a yacht too if yeah, I have that, that right. <laughs> 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 so uh, yeah, yeah, so if you want to influence your friends get right. a yacht yeah. get that's a right, yacht. That's right. <laughs> that's that's right. Awesome. <laughs> guys thanks so much this is a good conversation yeah. to have so uh, I think for everybody watching you know just a reminder that these are all just tools no matter what uh, you're never gonna want to stop doing physical interactions and community with people but in this new digital world there's a lot of ways you can impact people around you in ways that you never could before so embrace that see what god wants to do in all of that and uh go love your oikos and impact your front row we'll see you guys later